which maybe doesn't mean much here, but in the United States, if you're from the state of Iowa, we joke, you don't have much of a choice. Um, the only thing to do really is politics. Uh, it's something you grew up immersed with um, because of the Iowa caucuses are the kickoff of the American, let's say, political season, especially during election years. And so from a young age, I was fascinated by politics. And what I love to tell, especially young girls, is the person who actually got me interested in politics was my grandmother. And I like to point this out because my grandmother only ever got an education um, until she was 13 years old. Uh, and then quit school and was married very young. She was married and had her first child by 16. My grandmother was the most political woman I had ever met. And so when I grew up, I literally thought that all women were politicians. Uh, because I, this is a true story. I just thought that's what women did. And when I was, I remember being five years old, we lived in rural, rural part of the state. And the state capital is in Des Moines, and it's about four hours from where I grew up on my farm. And my grandmother would put me in a bus, and we would go to Des Moines, and we would do issue advocacy, or what they call it. And my grandmother would make me write letters with her to politicians. Um, I just really thought that's what young girls did. Um, so not surprisingly, um, when I enrolled in college, my um, bachelor's degree was in, my undergrad was definitely in political science because again, I just know any better. <laughs> and really enjoy still to this day, but my career path um, started out working in the US Congress uh, and then was pleased to kind of follow my career dreams which were increasingly becoming fascinated by international relations, foreign policy, um, and so I went to work in, um, I was very pleased to work in the Bush administration and the National Security Council. And it really, you know, that was a great position for me because I got to sort of, you know, see more about uh, topics like, you know, work very closely with the U.S. State Department, for instance, which is our diplomatic branch. I worked in the White House, which was um, national security focused. And when I was at the White House, I increasingly became interested in what was happening around the world especially with the um, democratic transition in a lot of countries, specifically um, a lot of countries in the former Soviet Union. And at that time when I was working there, we had, um, Ukraine had just gone through its, um, what they call Orange Revolution in 2004. And the new government was actually asking the United States uh, you know, government, you know, they were rekindling their relationship. They were starting to talk things about you know, what are good models for democratic governance. Um, and for setting up institutions. And I became fascinated by that. I thought, how interesting when governments are working on this sort of governance, how to create uh, institutions that are transparent, that are accountable. And while there, I became, again, very interested, my career took sort of another shift. And I became really interested in the role of women in governance structures around the world, especially when we started to look at countries that were facing severe development challenges um, and looking at sort of the role of what did it mean when you had large groups of marginalized populations who didn't feel that they were included or involved in either government or politics. And so I switched to my current field, which is now women's empowerment. 